<laughs> Tastes like ginger beer. Hey everybody, uh, my name's Caleb. I'm a geologist uh, here at JTV, and today we're gonna be unboxing some stuff. I went to the University of Tennessee and graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in uh, Geology. I am a chalk-like mine substance comprised of fossilized silica shells, a type of hard-shelled algae, but I sure do make beer look and taste great. Well, hard-shelled algae, diatomaceous earth, Interesting. We have some ginger beer and a rock. I've never actually held a diatomaceous earth piece. This is very interesting. It's very uh, chalky and it's, it's not very dense. So about 20% or one fifth of the oxygen you just breathe in is thanks to diatoms. Uh, diatoms are one of the major primary producers of oxygen on the planet and they account for anywhere between 20 to 50% of the oxygen on the earth, which is pretty crazy that such a small organism is able to contribute that much to us. A lot of people think about uh, trees and plants providing a lot of oxygen, but really algae and phytoplankton like diatoms are responsible for a significant portion of the oxygen we breathe. Diatoms live uh, in all sorts of water. You can find them in the ocean, you can find them in waterways, you can even find them in soils and places like marshes. They're, they're literally everywhere. Uh, on the planet. So you might be wondering how the how do these algae form a rock? They're actually a type of shelled algae that make a an insane variety of geometric shapes with a silica silicon dioxide shell. These these shell walls are actually made out of hydrated silica, which is almost the same composition as what you would find in an opal. So you might be wondering how how does an algae that that lives its life at the the top of the water column how do, how do they eventually become a rock? Well, as I mentioned previously, the, they make their shells out of silica, and then they will eventually die, and their uh, skeletons will be the only thing that's, that's left. And these silica skeletons will float down to the bottom of the, the either the ocean or the lake or, or wherever the, uh, they're living at the time. And over time, this silica gets buried and eventually turned into a rock through geologic processes. It's called diagenesis. Once you have something like a continental collision, that rock that's at the bottom of the ocean gets kind of scraped and uplifted to the land. But when diatomaceous earth is turned into a powder form, that is not good to breathe in. So it's, it's essentially like breathing in broken up glass. So caution does need to be taken when handling diatomaceous earth. Let's talk about how specifically uh, diatomaceous earth is used for beer filtration. Uh, what happens is during, after the beer has been brewed and during the uh, filtering process, diatomaceous earth of the appropriate grade is put on a kind of steel mesh and the beer is filtered through that mesh to get all the large particles that are left over from the, from the brewing process so that you're not having to to drink all of those those uh, particles and so that the beer looks less cloudy. You don't want to chew your beer. <laughs> this is uh, this is kind of cloudy, so let's toss this over to Elizabeth to show us how to uh, do some filtration with diatomaceous earth. Thanks, Caleb, for explaining all about diatomaceous earth. And I'm gonna do some really cool little experiments that you guys could probably do at home. So here, we're gonna first start off with our big glass of water. And we're gonna show you guys the porosity of diatomaceous earth. Porosity just refers to how much pore space and how much void space is actually in these rocks. So we're gonna drop this in. I'm actually gonna move it so there's less fingerprints. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you can actually hear the air escaping the diatomaceous or the diatomite rock. And so now we sink. So unlike pumice, diatomaceous earth will actually continuously or diatomite, the rock form, will continuously pull that water into it and soak it up, which will actually make it change its weight. Now, what is also nice is that because it is a rock product and it is inert, the waste is not harmful. It's very organic. Um, a lot of people actually use it in their organic gardens to keep pests away. 
But what's neat, and I don't know if you guys can see it, I'm gonna kind of shake it. You notice all those flakes coming off. So with diatomite, it's actually very friable. Now, friable refers to how easily or hard it is to break a stone and make it crumble. So this is not like cleavage, it's not like fracture. This is literally, does it fall apart and crumble? Kind of like, kind of like that. In the beer industry, like here, so you guys can see that we have a really, what we would call turbid ginger beer. So this turbidity is caused by floating particulate. Now what's really awesome about the diatomaceous earth is these particulates are really, really tiny, but because of the tiny pore space in the diatoms, it can help filter a lot of these tiny little particles. And so now we're going to make our own DE filter. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a little bit of water and that's gonna help prime the filter. We're gonna have our water bottle that I've cut the top off of just for ease of use, a paper towel, and I've already ripped it up into square sections or rectangular sections, um, cause we're gonna use this to put it over the end of the water bottle. And the only reason we're doing that is to help keep the diatomaceous earth just from completely flowing through. Cause you have to have something that'll actually kinda stop it. Today we're going to be using apple juice because why not? I really like apple juice. Um, but we've got our food grade um, diatomaceous earth. So put your paper towel over the end. And this is, we're gonna get really scientific here. So we have our pre-filtered media. We've got our, you know, fix the filtration into place rubber band. That is a hair tie, because I couldn't find a rubber band. And you wanna get that pretty tight on there because what's gonna happen is as the diatomaceous earth actually accumulates on the end of this, so that paper towel will actually kind of give a little bit. And so what you wanna do is create the best seal that you can because all of that DE actually builds up and will sometimes even come up into this part of the paper towel. And so that way you don't have water just flowing around it or just have the apple juice flowing around it. So before I pour this diatomaceous earth into my water bottle and start this experiment, um, I'm actually gonna put a mask on. It's not toxic for us to touch, but you really don't want to breathe it in. Just like if say you're cutting drywall or you're doing something that creates a lot of particles in the air, you don't wanna breathe that in. So, um, you know, you, you always just want to err on the side of caution. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit. So this is what we call priming. So once, once I put this in there and pour the water over it, we're actually priming the filter. And that just means that we are creating a layer of diatomaceous earth over the filter that then our apple juice slash beer is actually going to pass through. Um, and you'll know, notice as soon as I put the water on it that there is actually diatomaceous earth passing through it until there is a thick layer built up. So now that we've got our diatomaceous earth down inside of our water bottle. So now we're gonna put a little bit of our water into this. And that's actually why I have two different glasses. So when the diatomaceous earth actually first starts in the system, you have to kind of give it a little bit to work. Um, so what you guys are gonna notice is that until it is, whoop, until it actually builds up, it's gonna go through quickly, but you can already see that it's not nearly as cloudy as it was initially. So if you give it a minute while I'm talking, and I'm gonna seal this up, and then I can take my mask off. So notice, it's getting slower and slower with the drip. So if you give it a few minutes, you can see that this is actually building up. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna shake my apple juice, get it nice and mixed up. I want all of that lovely sediment kicked up. And while this is going, we're gonna go ahead and 
make it even more turbid. And what's great about this is with the gravity, you are pushing that apple juice through. And so here we're gonna let it keep going just like that. And after a while, it should build up. And we're gonna do like those awesome cooking shows that already have something started for you guys so that we don't have to sit here for a day. We have one, and excuse the paper towel, the water bottle was a little bit narrower, so it didn't want to stay. Um, but here you can see the difference. This is the same kind of apple juice. This has been going for two days. And I started off and the apple juice was about up to here. So as you guys can see, it's gone down quite a bit. Um, and you can see the extreme difference in the clarity of the apple juice and the filtered apple juice. And some things to point out if you guys can see it, let's turn it this way, is that you can actually see the diatomaceous earth built up all around that paper towel. So if you noticed that the water was still cloudy when I poured it through. So that is actually diatoms. They got washed through. So they are small enough to actually go through the paper towel. The paper towel is not filtering the apple juice. It is all mechanically being filtered by the diatoms. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section about any other future experiments that you guys would like to see that are related to rocks or gems. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Sorry, it was really busy. <laughs> Tastes like ginger beer. <laughs> <laughs>